We have a question from David in Stockport um, who says, my wife is Spanish and I'm British. So I think this is a per more of yeah. a personal question. Yeah. Um, we have a home in Spain and in the UK. Will we be treated the same as we are now by both Spain and the UK? Or um, will we need visas to travel from the UK to Spain and vice versa? Well, almost certainly you won't need visas. Um, now, there, the, you know, we still have to tie up that particular set of loose ends. Uh, both, both the we and the EU will have to make some from regulations and rules and work out how it works. But we don't require visas from Americans at the moment, nor vice versa. Um, and in future, we will probably come up with some arrangement which uh, allows visa-free travel between the UK and Spain. Um, so. It's very unlikely that we will need visas to go to Europe. We might have to do the same sort of thing that you have to do if you go to the US now from Britain, which is fill in this online form, the ESTA, and, and vice versa, because the EU is planning to introduce a version of that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's not a really a proper visa application. It's just a sort of very quick online form. So that is not uh, such a big issue. Um, right. But, uh, um, and it is, the, uh, um, for, uh, um, uh, um, sorry, what was the name of the questioner, Dan? It was from David. David. Yeah. For David's Spanish wife, um, will things change here? Some, but not very much. Um, so one of the provisions in the deal, the withdrawal agreement, if it goes through, enables um, uh, e e people from the EU who are already living here to apply for something called settled status, mm -hmm. which means that they will keep most, if not all, of the rights that they have currently under free movement. So people coming from Spain in future won't have those rights, but people who are coming from, who are already here from Spain, right. can apply for a settled status, mm -hmm. and if they get it, and most of them should get it, um, then they will have most of the rights that they currently have, in particular the really important rights, like the right to, to work, right. the right to access the NHS, the right to, to, yeah. to go to have send their kids to school, and all of that. Um, it'll be a bit more complicated for David going to Spain, of course, though, because although British people in, who are living in Spain will have these rights already, if he's only got a holiday house in Spain, um, mm -hmm. he may well not be eligible for the equivalent settled status in Spain. So um, it could be a lot more complicated. Um, suppose the two of them want to retire there um, after, you know, when they're, when they're mm -hmm. old enough. Um, that will depend on the laws that the Spanish government has in force at the time, uh, which might allow that or might not. Um, so in that sense, uh, um, David's wife is mostly going to keep her rights as a, as a Spanish person here because she's already here. Um, but his rights in Spain are much more under question. Uh, that doesn't mean they're necessarily go. The Spanish could decide to, to, to allow for, to, for some of them. Um, but uh, that's not prescribed in the withdrawal agreement. There's no obligation on the Spanish to ensure that he has those rights. So they're at risk, potentially. And to double check, you had mentioned um, that the settled status yeah. um, sort of like mechanism yeah. is um, part of like the EU withdrawal agreement. Yeah. Is there any, what happens if that doesn't like pass? Like, are there any provisions for... If that doesn't pass, we're going to have an almighty mess, I think is the short answer. Um, what the, on, the, 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 the good side is that, fortunately, the UK has already incorporated the main provisions of the EU law and freedom of movement into its own law. So even after we leave the EU, even if we crash out with no deal... Um, it won't be that David's Spanish wife suddenly becomes an, an irregular immigrant, an illegal right. immigrant overnight. Mm -hmm. um, so she and three million people at least immediately won't have a problem. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that there won't be problems down the line. There will be problems down the line. People stay, you know, there are all sorts of complicated questions. What about if her relatives want to come over for an extended visit? Um, what about her rights to, if she had made pension contributions in Spain and wanted to transfer right. them to... All that becomes put into some sort of legal limbo. Um, it'll probably work out, but it will be a mess. And there will be lots of court cases and litigation, and uh, it's generally going to be a mess. And what's worse, it's going to be even, you know, if you thought that was bad, it's going to be even, if there's no deal, it'll be even worse for Brits in Spain and other Brits in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, because they, that will depend on what each individual country chooses to do to 
deal with the status of these Brits in Europe who are no longer covered, who are no oh, longer are EU citizens. Okay. So the French have said that they're going to pass a law that will sort of ensure that, that Brits in France are okay, the Germans too, but other countries haven't even really begun to grapple with this question. So if I were a Briton in Bulgaria, say, uh -huh. um, there are not that many of them, which means that they're not very high up the agenda, the Bulgarian government probably has other things to worry about, they may just end up in some sort of limbo and that will be very, very difficult. Okay. Um, so returning back to kind of the settled status, will um, or the proposed sort of settled status, mm. will people from the EU, like David's wife, still be able to like access the NHS and yes. other public yeah. services? Those rights will almost okay. entirely be protected. Okay. 